didn't even touch on that. <laughs> yeah, it's like you have to sacrifice a creature and even to even target it. There's no guarantee you even kill it. And look at you. You called it right there. If Spike uh, uh, is on this hand, it's got Soren. It's got Vein Ripper uh, on turn three. Now, whether or not that's good enough is maybe a different question, but that is certainly the combo you want to see. It looks like Corey is on the play and it does look like there's quite a few counter spells lined up to maybe try to interact with the all the, you know, Profane Tutor, Soren Imperious Bloodlord, the One Ring. But if there's one thing that Black is known for, it's discard spells, and that is the bane of, of a counter spell deck. That's right. So, all right, yeah. Turn one Ragavan, just the, the flagstones and Urborg here. Turn two Kavu. Uh, well, Corey did say something about his deck being Zoo, and that's going to be an option available to him. Let's just go creature, creature. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a good curve. And actually, it looks like his hand, it looks like Corey's hand is actually going to line up very well versus Aspiring Spike's hand right here because he's going to get a really ahead on mana. Also, quite ahead on the board. There's like nothing blocking, there's no interaction from Spike, at least for the first two turns. Unless he can rip uh, the perfect card, which would be a smallpox, sacrificing the flagstone of Trocare to go get a land anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would have been absolutely ideal with that Urborg enabling that, the classic. Uh, Corey exiling the, we, we mentioned Liliana's Corey gets it with the exile from the Ragavan. Uh, Spike could end up getting thoughts used himself the way this is going. Uh, but Looks like uh, now, yeah, you, you talked about Corey's hand lining up. He's got threats in play, and he's got counter spells to sit behind. Interesting line of not playing the Territorial Cavu, making sure that there's no chance of that smallpox even resolving, because that would still be a beating. And there's he's, there's like no cost to waiting one more turn. Attack mm -hmm. with the Ragavan, get another treasure token, play your territor Territorial Cavu, and still have counter spell up for the... Soren, Liliana type of hands, or even if there was a smallpox going to be available on this turn. Yeah, and the only, if we start trying to, to forecast ahead a little bit here, uh, Spike is going to have the one ring as follow-up, uh, but Corey with Force Negation and Leyline Binding has ways to keep it from at least going wild over several turns, and all the while, Ragavan's going to be just hanging away. And we are going to see a Territorial Cavu, which is at least a 4-4 now and can get bigger as time goes on. All right, a second Flagstones for Spike. Um, adds the mana, is going to go out and play it, does the trick here, gets to go fetch out uh, a, another land from the deck. Doesn't necessarily uh, you know, make anything um, wild happen in this particular circumstance, but allows you to kind of hedge against the legendary drawback there. and. Try to cast Soren. Going to eat a counter spell, and then it looks like uh, or he's going to go back to the turn. Attack for six, put a spike down to ten. Have force of negation up, and remember there is a lightning bolt in hand, so aspiring spike is effectively at thirteen life at this point. After taking six, we'll go down to seven. Very close. Very very close. Yeah, so the, the interesting thing here is if Corey goes for the second Kavu, will not would not have had up the Force of Negation, except for the fact that off of uh, that last Kavu trigger, was able to find a ley line of the Guild Pack, which provides that blue card to, force, uh, to pitch to the Force uh, to really possibly change things. That said, Profane Tutor coming off the Suspend for Spike. Yeah, but what what can Spike get to get get back in this game here? He chooses the Soren, trying to go for Soren number two, but unfortunately, it's just going to eat. Well, actually, not the Soren, oh, the, the one ring. ring. Yeah, one ring to eat a force of negation, and, and that'll snap do it. concede. Well, that was <laughs> Soren Vein Ripper's powerful, but Ragavan just completely took over that game. It was just the fact that Corey was able to every turn. He just passes with counter spell mana open, and Spike uh, has to run something into it. Just gets further and further behind both the 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 damage and the mana provided by the monkey there. 
I would say one thing that hurt Aspiring Spike in that game was being on the draw, not having anything to do on turn one yeah. to interact with uh, to interact with Corey was a little bit unfortunate. But he's gonna be on he's gonna be on the play now. So all the two drops are gonna come in right on time. Yeah, looking over the sideboards here, looks like uh, Corey's deck just becomes a, a slightly different looking pile of cards. <laughs> um, but but yeah, sort of uh, picks his pieces a little bit here. Also, pick your poison uh, to interact with the ring from Spike. Uh, in addition to maybe it'll come up with something else here. I guess hey, it, can well, it hits a, the vein ripper. A vein ripper, yeah, that's right. Vein ripper flies. Sack all your flyers. Sorry, vein ripper. I didn't even target you. I didn't even <laughs> target you. Yeah, it's a big game. An additional interaction from Spike here in the form of Celestial Purge. That makes sense. A Celestial Purge in that game would have made a huge difference to be able to take out that Ragavan that was providing all of that value. It'll also hit uh, the Fable. It will also hit the Kavus. It can hit a Ley Line, I suppose, if that was the direction you wanted to go. Uh, but yeah, Celestial Purge, a pretty powerful classic sideboard option here. Purge actually is pretty good. Yeah, on those Ley Line turns when you have to try to deal with the uh, sign of Draco. If you need to target it, then you could after you eat up the ley line. Although I'm not sure Spike's deck has anything that would target the Scion. I think it's just like Liliana, make you sack. Liliana, make you sack. But it would turn off the Sinner. It's proof creatures. Yeah, and you know, hey, it's a nice. Uh, you can see the way that the format has sort of evolved around it. Spike's deck is built to interact with it mm -hmm. without interacting with it directly. Another innovation here, an innovation, another addition to modernness is surveil lands, allowing Spike to bottom a uh, fatal push as he doesn't want. Yeah, I guess not wanting it because it's not really on curve. We have better options to do on turn two, either between. Tutor, Pox, Celestial Purge. Nothing played on turn one, though. The Tutor it is. This is looking much better if you're Spike. You have a small Pox lined up. You have extra land, so even though you don't really have a, a quote-unquote value small Pox, uh, it's very possible that, especially when you're on the play, taking away a Triome-type mana source for Cory is super powerful in its own right. So Cory, on the other hand, is basically looking at a pile of magic cards in his out um a uh a, 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 any type of synergies but does have a sign of draco and that's pretty good it's big i wonder if we're gonna see a pox now or maybe the liliana actually this was just top deck what and a draw unfor yeah unfortunately for Corey, no blue card in hand to use the force of negation wow what a draw for spike there that takes down the scion that was what Corey didn't want to see. He called it out. It was late Liliana the Veil, and that just ruined his day, not having a blue card to pitch to pitch the force of negation, a real cost. And now, totally different game. I mean, he's looking at how does he want to answer Liliana. He's got options to Fable. If he wants to play a longer-term game here, you can dash out Ragavan to just take Liliana off the board. Uh, but maybe he decides that we'll, we'll play out a, a slightly different game here and try to play ahead for future turns with this fable of the mirror breaker looks like that's what he does this literally is a line out of like 2014 oh you yeah. tapped out on turn two with your creature liliana yeah. the veil sacrifice it oh by the way i still have a liliana the veil on the battlefield yeah and you've been playing merfolk in in all kinds of tournaments to extremely good results by the way for anybody listening at home <laughs> uh so you're very oh, familiar with you, like the you. danger of liliana right <laughs> Yeah, uh, if I can kill it immediately, great. Like with a Muta Vault. But if yeah, it sticks Vault. on the board, oh, it is a pain. Like if I can't get it ticks up, go to two, I got to discard a card, and now <laughs> it's ready to eat up another creature no matter what I play. Mm -hmm. no, it's very sickening cards to deal with. I saw that you had to, the, as part of you, you mentioned that you had to cut cards you didn't want to cut. This looked like some of them might have been Muta Vaults. <laughs> Just for the Urza Saga. In my <laughs> mind, I'm upgrading Muta Vault for that Urza Saga. Oh, there you go. There you go. Well, speaking of upgrades, uh, Vein Ripper has upgraded Aspiring Spike's board here coming in off of Soren with Liliana ticked up to two. I mean, Corey made the decision to tap out for that Fable. The other option was just falling further behind on board if you're trying to hold up uh, one of the other interaction spells. So this is it now. Can Corey find an answer to Vein Ripper plus multiple Planeswalkers 
and Spike just sitting on on, on perfect well, cards over there. Let's see what comes off of this Fable of the Mirror Breaker loot, or rummage, I should say, because the board is not super terrible. You can lay line binding the Vein Ripper, sacrifice your uh, Goblin Shaman, mm -hmm. put Raghavan in play with Dash, eat up the Liliana, and then a Soren with no creature in play? Not the worst thing in the world. True. And you still have a Fable in play. Yeah, very well said, and we'll see uh, what direction Corey decides to take here. But that is certainly a line back into the game that being able to answer a Vayne Ripper and not just being, okay, right-click concede is uh, basically all you can ask for when someone resolves their Soren L Vayne Ripper combo. Alternatively, I guess you could play like Raghavan for one, ley line binding the Vayne Ripper, attack with your Goblin Shaman and actually get a treasure out of it. That may not be the worst either. Right. Step one, fetch. Step two, tap the Sacred Foundry for red mana. Corey working through a lot of options here. Mm -hmm. Those look like you called it one red mana to cast the Ragavan. Step two, attack. Yeah. Pick up a treasure. Slam this ley line binding. Yeah, this is going to work out okay for Corey in, in the sense that the game is not over. Right? Mm -hmm. the, the, the game is not just over to the Plane Walkers plus the Vein Ripper. The game is, in fact, far from over. But this is uh, not the worst spot. You you, you talked about it. An open sore and not the end of the world here. And Corey uh, is even sitting on Force of Negation Mana thanks to that treasure token he was able to uh, secure thanks to the flash on, on the binding. Yeah, exactly. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, there are two answers to this goblin token. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Just lets the goblin token get eaten up. Going to save the force and negation for something spicier. Um, we'll see how that works out for him because now the danger is that Soren is ticking up and a second Vein Ripper has joined Spike's hand. So could have another one in play. And now Corey does not have an abundance of creatures to sacrifice to pay that ward cost, of course, which mm -hmm. is really the, the secret. The, the, the power that people, I think, miss when they first read Vayne Ripper is that uh, this is a really difficult cost to play, to pay when this hits play in turn three. I, you know, I thought that Corey would have trouble with cards in this matchup, given how, you know, attrition -y the Aspiring Spikes deck is. But mm -hmm. it seems like it's not even a problem at all. Look, expressive iteration, turn five, going to like grind into a bunch of cards and followed up by another expressive iteration uh, anytime he wants. Yeah, he's just gonna have to find an answer. It looks like to the uh, the the future Vein Ripper coming. So top of the library choices: Murktide Regent, Avu, Wooded Foothill. So we'll see what he wants to do here. He may he does have the mana available to put the Regent into play. I think uh, based on what's in the graveyard, but. Uh, if not, definitely a low option to the Kavu. So yeah, it looks like Regent to Hand, Kavu to Exile, which means Kavu is going to hit play here for Corey. And I think that's big in that it's two creatures against the smallpox that mm -hmm. Spike is threatening. That's right. <laughs> this flagstones for a little extra value on that smallpox. To be honest, Spike is getting to the point where... You can almost cast that Vein Ripper. <laughs> That's a good point. We're almost there. All well, right, here's the classic synergy. Is, yeah, step one, smallpox. This is what you want, smallpox, sacrifice, and flagstones. Corey, though, now has, uh, unlike earlier, has plenty of blue cards for force negation mm -hmm. and has to decide if he does, in fact, care about smallpox. So an interesting one based on the fact that Soren is still in play and so is Vayne Ripper in hand. Well, I mean, or he's going to lose three cards if this resolves. Mm -hmm. A land, a creature, a card in hand. So maybe it's just better to have at least one of those cards that... to If you're going to lose at least two cards, lose two cards in hand and keep one card in play. Right. And Corey agrees. Looks like Murktide is going to get eaten. Yeah, so Vayne Ripper is going to hit the graveyard. Oh no, he let it resolve. Yeah, Vayne Ripper hits the graveyard from this. 
the Kavu sticks around. The Soren is now, it looks like, wide open to get hit by the Kavu. Mm-hmm. This is suddenly turned around for Corey here, who was able to work his way through that difficult turn and really just crucially had one creature left standing at the end of all of it and now even has a ley line binding uh, for extra. This is looking very, very good for Baumeister. Is it yeah. five color? Pretty strong. <laughs> yeah, all these new cards, the ley line binding with this. When this card first got played against me, I'm like, yeah. it does what? <laughs> it does all that for one mana. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Truth be told, you can blow it up with so many cards. I mean, it's just an enchantment. I mean, it's, a, it's an O-ring, right? An Oblivion mm-hmm. Ring is, you know, it's, a, it's been a playable card in Magic more or less since it was printed. It's the Flash, of course, that sets it apart. Um, and, and, and the one and obviously the, the, the creation of Triomes changed, changed everything. But mm-hmm. uh, Spike on the back foot here with this, uh, with, with gas to spare for Corey now. Or rather, answers to spare, which with the threat in play equates to the same thing. Look at that. One of the best draws Spike could hope for. A Celestial Purge on the Kavu. However, Corey going to be able to burn Force Negation here to save it. Which that I guess means Spike would be live to draw, you know, another answer, right? At that hmm. point, get rid of the Kavu and... Uh, equalize the board so step if you got to work your way through some answers start early but instead Corey again just letting everything resolve yeah that's a wild take we have nothing in play or do we have a plan here oh we're just gonna okay you know what Corey wow. says cards matter in this matchup we're not gonna two for one ourselves and boom right off okay, the top sure. we have <laughs> the Ragavan. To attack, get three mana back and have force negation up. And now wow. this, I mean, now Corey is super far ahead. Uh, a ring has been exiled. So uh, that, well, this, this is an interesting spot here. The ring gets exiled, so Spike will not have drawn that uh, and Corey will not counter it. But instead, Spike draws Thoughtseize, which does elicit a force of negation hard cast from Corey here. So able to counter it without having to, to burn one from his hand. And now is back in the same spot. Spike is top decking. Corey is dashing Ragavan and keeping up force in the game. Hey, you were that? right. Corey did, has just had it on cards. And and Ragavan has obviously smoothed the way a little bit in terms of mana. Uh, but this mm-hmm. this this deck is... This, is it five-color decks? <laughs> Looked pretty good here. Uh, against, honestly, a smallpox deck that I thought would line up pretty well uh, against what Corey was doing. I know. It turns out like this, these five color piles are just super strong. Even against cards we would think would interact super well versus them. Like, you know, just, yeah. just so much card advantage. Yeah, sure. Well, I'll, pi- I'll pitch a creature to Vayne Ripper. Sure. I'll pitch another creature. Right. I have millions of creatures to pitch to this thing. Yeah. And the reality is that this game looks like a blowout now, right? Corey it was down mm-hmm. on life, but up on cards and seems to have things well in hand but basically there was a turn where spike had planeswalkers and Corey was one card away from not being able to answer it right and if Corey doesn't yeah, answer right. the planeswalkers on that turn instead it's spike who starts rolling that snowball down the hill it gathers uh you know quite a bit as it goes and you just roll on to victory instead Corey was able to do the same thing with the kavus and the ragavans uh just uh, providing the the, the value he needed to get there now spike looking uh looking pretty sad with the running urborgs off the top you see the respect from Corey. five mana up and says i'm not tapping a single mana down no we're going to keep force negation and counterspell up for the two unknown cards and aspiring spikes end if only Corey knew there was uh just two donuts in hand (laughs) he wants this repeat that's what he's here or you know, you get a second title under his belt on these leagues, playing tight. But but really, we look. We watched Corey let everything resolve. Sure, take my creature. Sure, take my. When we thought that he might fight over it, said, "I'm just not going to lose to you, and I'll find a way to beat you later." And this mm-hmm. turns out he was able to find the creatures off the top to do that. Mm. 
All right, this is going to eat a force negation. Yeah, things seem well in hand, but Corey thinking it through, just uses the force of negation, trying to to, to play through all the lines. Uh, this might be it if he uh, runs that Ragavan out there. I think that um, is a five five. We'll see. What a what a showing by Corey yeah. on this deck. Like look how many cards he's run through over there in his graveyard, and what we did not see at any point was the Leyline Scion play. <laughs> the the, the eight-card package that we talked up just didn't even make an appearance, didn't need it. The bottom end of the curve is more than good enough to win the game. Well, yeah, here's a, a Scion just for the namesake. But yeah, what a great showing here by Corey. Remember the format here for the Mitko Masters today is try to get two wins before you get two losses. Mm -hmm. And Corey already being up a game looks like he is... Well on his way to that first victory. So I think Corey is going to play the Scion to guarantee a lethal attack by next turn. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, if you attack with the Cavu, don't play Scion. Um, well, actually, also by playing the Scion, get that Trample enabled by that Territorial Cavu. And Corey wins the match! Good point. Corey Baumeister taking down the first match of the day.